details. You know, it's very hard sometimes to go through every little detail in the beginning before you get to experience it. Just like in the face bow demonstration. When you went in the operatories and tried to do the face bow, the lecture part had more meaning after you tried to do it and made mistakes. <laughs> when you see the little problems, so our focus in this course is to make sure you try something and even make a mistake and say, how would I improve this? Because the goal, and we have staff here, is Melissa is your staff, Mary Sue, right? So Melissa, this is a great opportunity for you because our goal is to get this back to staff, right? The staff should be able to take the photos. The staff should be able to do the scanning. What a great opportunity for you to be here. So we'll look for feedback for you about, you know, was it easy to implement? What questions you have as a staff? Now, when you watch me do it, it actually will be a little bit more fragmented because I have to wait for the router to go up on the screen and I have to wait for the flash to cycle. But in your practice, you can just bang off the photos very quickly. They don't take very long. But we had problems in each of the, in each of the exercises based on potentially uh, just the logistics of the room setting and those kinds of things. So, one of the things we need to do is get the patient's natural head posture actually before they sit down. So I'm going to have Nancy stand up. Yeah. And we're going to come out here. I'm just going to do this a bit in front of the room. Now remember, the Dean showed you the concept of the viewing angle and how that influences what the occlusal plane looks like, right? If you look at the occlusal plane from above, it looks radial. You look at it from below, it's reversed. So the reason for the bubble level is now your viewing angle doesn't matter. So that's the reason I went to the bubble levels. So even if you're taller, even if you're shorter, as long as the bubble levels are in the middle, the head is level. Does everybody understand why you need this? And so we put bubble levels on all your glasses. The reason I have bubble levels on both sides is sometimes maybe you know, how you want to do that. So many dentists, when they come here, they struggle. They struggle with how this is working and where they're putting this, right? Well, how they're putting this on the patient. So I want to make sure you don't do this mistake. People just think you stick it on the ears and you stick it on the nose. That's not how this works. This is meant to be adjusted for natural head posture. So natural head posture is controversial, but in general, it would be how the patient looks in the mirror, right? So I will do this in one second. So you ask the patient to put it on. Now, I would recommend, as you all have done, you have your temple tips on, and they need to be slid a little more forward, because you're gonna wanna lock these behind the ears. Probably by next year, we have a little bit in, different in design already. Every time we work on something, we try to improve it, improve it, improve it. So these are our reference glasses 2.0. We have some other design features coming later. Remember, these dots on the glasses are 140 millimeters apart. That's a known reference. That's critical to put a known reference in your photograph. Next part. When these are on the head, we need to get the bubble levels pretty level, and Nancy's actually already pretty level, but <laughs> this is too easy. I wish it was a bit more challenging. But the idea is, let me make sure. So if you look, I can touch it, and this bubble level is in the middle, and even the side, just turn sideways for a minute, even the side bubble level is dead on in the middle. Okay, so far? Now, once it's dead on in the middle, my preference is to try to get these a little bit hugged. Nancy already did it all. Uh, they would be hugged in the back of the ears so you could sit in the chair, and even if you moved your head around or jostled your head around, it would, once you look straight, now I know the bubble levels are level. Does everybody understand what I mean? 
So if it wasn't, you would just drop it down on the nose or raise it up. You could put a little two by two gauze in here. You have lots of options. But Nancy's head, if you look at Nazion to the tops of her ears, it actually is pretty level. In most people, we find the glasses are a bit tipped up and they have to slide down the nose. If they slide down the nose, when people were smiling, they start to move the glasses because of the nose lifting. So we made these glasses, I made them wider, so it reduces the nose issue. The, the next set will have an independent temple arm. So the idea for now is she's already pretty level, and just to verify, I would say, just look in the mirror, and her head didn't hardly move, and this is natural head posture. The bubble levels are perfectly in the middle. In fact, Nancy, you could see your bubble levels. You could see that one, you could see that one. Now, the side one, I can't see, so I rely on the dental assistant or a second person to see the side bubble. bubble. Okay, let's put you in the chair. Once the glasses are on the head, standing, now you're ready to sit down. So this is gonna be important. To expedite the exercise, my recommendation is you put the glasses on before you become the patient. You don't start the glasses at that point. So some of you will be milling around while the one's taking the photos, one's being the patient. Let's be a little bit more productive. Stick the glasses on, get them level, and lock them in the back of the ears. Okay, so far? Now, when I go to take the images, now you ask the patient, you'll do it in the other room. You wanna sit forward in the chair. And before you do anything else, we have the cheek retractors ready to go. You undo the cheek retractors. Now this is important so you can see the teeth clearly. We have to see the teeth clearly. So there's two parts to this. This is the tip of a disposable air syringe, an uh, air water syringe. Why? If you notice the photos, the teeth are apart. The reason the teeth are apart, this is not an MIP photo. This is a clear delineation of the teeth. You need to see the incisal edges. So if the teeth have overlap, you can't see the edges clearly. So I, this is cheap. This is less than five cents. I priced everything out. You have these. These are these clear plastic ones. If the patient has a lot of deeper overlap, you could slide this further back to open the vertical more. If the overlap is even more significant, we bought a box of clear saliva ejectors that you could slide in the back. They're seven millimeters in diameter and they'll open the vertical a fair amount. But for most people, the saliva ejector is too thick. This works just, just fine. So we go ahead, we put this in. And then I take this piece, this is this clear piece, it's hard to see, and I slide it back and just close. Hold on, Nancy, move it around. <coughs> just go ahead and close, there you go. Now, you ask the patient, sit forward. Uh, before I do that, let me just, hold on one second. Just stick that out, see if it fit out. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to do the photo uh, Betsy mentioned, which is the tip back photo. Uh, you could, it's best to do it first so that they can open and then you put this in, okay? I'll do that photo and then we'll put this in on Nancy. So you stay, plenty forward, and it's nicer if the background is tipped back away. Don't, don't lean back. So I know, for instance, Ryan has shadow boxes in his operatory. I, he was here once, he showed photographs of his new office. I mean, it's beautiful. I don't have the luxury of the shadow boxes, so we just use the foam, the, the background, it's white, 
The reason it's white is so when you print them, you don't pay for printing ink. <laughs> it's on white paper. Use a black background, you're going to use a lot of ink. Blue background, a lot of ink. That's your choice. So there's a lot more cool things you can do. This is not about being cool. This is not Facebook famous photos. These are data collection photographs, okay? Data. So the first one. <coughs> I'm going to ask Nancy to just tip your head back and open. So open as wide as you can, and now twist your head just a little bit so I can this way, less. Good. Or if, if you can, if the patient's not doing it, you could just move the camera and get this photo, tip it like that's perfect, and I'll just take this picture. It's done, and now we'll put in the the retract the um, air water syringe, the plastic piece. On that picture, do you want the bubble levels still in the middle, right? No, they just hit, tip it back. I just, you'll see it come up. I just try to get, you see the flags? Uh, they won't always be in the middle with Nancy. I mean, her head's not so wide, so it's very easy to get it straight across. Am I making sense where the red pieces are? It's pretty straight across just so you have a way of orienting the photo so that if you want to move the STL file and do a digital face photo, that's what this picture is for, right? If you think about it, no matter how much you think this is maybe time consuming or annoying, I promise you it's less time consuming than some of the other things we've done. The other thing you realize is what you're learning to do is more than, di than just digital. The problem in the digital world is coming back to the analog world. So my point is if you want a model that comes on an articulator, that comes out of the computer screen, that's what we've been working on. Because you can't just have everything go to a digital lab and then come back with a final product. You can't use that so easily for case presentation for equilibration, for a lot of the things that you've learned to do. Because this is true 3D. So if you want something to come back that's physical, then you need to do some of the steps to close the gap. Otherwise it stays on the computer. And so if you're like me, I still like to walk into the case presentation and show a model. I mean, I just don't like, I'm not used to it. Right? Maybe in Andrew's uh, office, he's more used to it. So part of the problem is me. Right? But if you have computer screens and if you could present your case on your laptop, great. I still do it a little bit old school. I, I need them all. <laughs> so if that's more your style, you need some extra data to come back out of the computer. Does everybody understand? So, yes, you can print the model, but the important part, and this is what the course is about, is what do you do with the model? Otherwise, the model's in your hand. Just like making an alginate with a base on it, if you can't put it on the articulator, how do you use it for treatment planning? The way we learn. So you decide the level that you're looking for. That's what we're trying to explain. We worked very hard to try to figure out moving in and out from the analog world to the digital world. I'm sorry, it's been so long. I forgot about you, Nancy. You learn to shorten it out. Yeah, 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 you learn to shorten <laughs> Let's get a tissue for Nancy. Do we have the box of tissues right behind me? I'm sorry. No, it's okay. It's my fault. I, I would be this is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's TMI, Nancy, right now. Let's just go ahead with photos. I'll just do this. 
That's perfect. So if you just sit forward, I'm just trying to get you a little bit further from the background. Now, you tip your head this way just a little bit. That's it, bubble level's in the middle. Bubble level on the side. She now tips her head. Just have her tip her head. Which way? Just down a little bit. So now don't move. Now I'm going to take my camera. I'm going to stay focused in. Uh, could we, we should have raised the chair a little bit. Nancy's a little bit shorter. Good. So now, stay like that. Is the bubble level right? Now I'm going to take this picture. Now I'm going to lock in the focus stand. Yeah. Now we'll go ahead and take out the cheek retractors. Go ahead. And then that piece. You have the tissue, you okay? I'm good, great. Okay. Now. All right. So now what I'm going to ask you to do is not move. Re-level the bubbles. Don't move. Now say Emma. Okay, we'll watch that go on the screen. Don't move. Now, what, as soon as that starts beeping, I'm going to add smile. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to ask for the Duchenne smile. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Duchenne. And then I'm going to ask in a, one more second or two, the shush. Hold on. Shush. Shush. Hold it. Okay, now, if you notice, I did not take the camera off my face. I kept the camera on my face and I keep my body locked as much as you can. Keep your elbows in. Dentist asked me, should I put a tripod here? Should I stabilize the camera? The tripod makes no difference to you if the person's moving, right? Otherwise, you have to keep focusing on the tripod. It doesn't work. Just do this. Move it back and forth. You can see her head is very much in the same place. Every single picture. This one, this one, this one. So when you finish and you look at the camera, when you look at the back, if you did well, if you just follow it through, you would go through the patient and they're not moving. See her head? Did you see her head working through that? Very little head movement. One goes right over the other. Bam, 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 bam. Right? Just the, the quick photos. So remember, repose, Duchenne, lip dynamics. Betsy and I will appreciate that.